we're told a sequence is defined by f of n is equal to 1 fifth times f of n minus 1. So each term, whatever the value of the function is there, or the, the sequence is for that term, it's 1 fifth times the previous term. For each whole number n, where n is greater than 1, and then they also tell us, which we need, what the first term is. f of 1 is equal to 50. Now the reason I have this graph here is what I want you to do is pause this video and figure out what the value of this function is for n equals 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then we're going to be able to graph this together and think about what that graph looks like and why. All right, now let's do this together. And what I like to do is set up a table here. Or on this left column, I have n. And then over here, I have f of n on the right column. And so let's first start with n equals 1. Well, they already tell us that f of 1 is equal to 50. And if we want, we can plot that. When n is equal to 1, and I should say this is the n-axis instead of the x-axis, when n is equal to 1, f of 1 is 50 right over here. So let's call this the y is equal to f of n axis. All right, let's do the next one. I'll do that in red. When n is equal to 2, well, f of 2 is going to be equal to, it says it right over here, 1 fifth times f of 2 minus 1, or 1 fifth times f of 1. So I could just write that as 1 fifth times f of 1, which is equal to 1 fifth times 50, which is equal to 10. So when n is equal to 2, this is equal to 10 right over here. f of 2 is 10. And then now let's go to when n is equal to 3. f of 3, I think you see the pattern here, is equal to 1 fifth times f of 2. Times f of 2. We know what f of 2 is, it's 10. So it's equal to 1 fifth times 10, which is equal to 2. So when n is equal to 3, y is equal to f of n is equal to 2, which is right about there. And then last but not least, do that in orange, when n is equal to 4, f of 4 is equal to 1 fifth times f of 3, the previous term, which is equal to 1 fifth times 2, which is equal to 2 fifths. So that's less than 1, so it's going to be really just right above 0 like that. And so we have graphed those four points. And you might see an interesting pattern here. You might say, hey, you know what? This looks a lot like exponential decay. And that's not a coincidence. Because remember, every term here, it's 1 fifth times the previous term. So we're decaying. We're multiplying each successive term by 1 fifth. It's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. But that's what we're seeing here when we're dealing with a geometric sequence. Now in this particular scenario, we defined this geometric sequence recursively. Each successive term, we've defined it in terms of the previous term, and then we got a starting condition. There's other ways to define a geometric series so that it is not recursive, but it's good to get exposure to this. So generally speaking, if you have each successive term is going to be some multiple of the previous term, here it's a, a multiple less than one, it could be a multiple greater than one, you're going to have points that look like they're on some type of exponential curve. If on the other hand, you had an arithmetic sequence where each successive term is plus or minus some fixed amount of the previous term, then it will look more linear. 